We have Senator Ted Cruz with us. It was perfect uh, timing to come on at this moment. Uh, he was on the shortlist for the Supreme Court. Didn't want it. Too good for the Supreme Court, as Senator Cruz. But he's got a new book coming out called One Vote Away, How a Single Supreme Court Seat Can Change History. Senator, thank you so much for coming on. It's great to see you. Andrew, thank you for having me. Great to see you as well. So before we get to the book, before we get to One Vote Away, I want to ask you what you're expecting uh, at these hearings. The hearings are going forward fast, mid-October, they're saying, yep. for Amy Coney Barrett. What are you expecting to see? Well, the hearings will commence on October 12th. We're st we'll start with opening questions, and then we'll shift in on the second day. Uh, opening statements on day one. The second day, we'll shift into questions from the senators. Um uh, each senator will get 30 minutes, uh, and so we'll have 30-minute rounds alternating Republican-Democrat, Republican-Democrat. The next day, we'll have another round of questions, 20-minute rounds. Um, I expect the Democrats to do everything they can to turn this into a political circus, just like they did to the Justice Kavanaugh hearings. Um, they, you know, a week ago, before the vacancy, the hard left was already filled with rage and fury and anger. And, and then you add a Supreme Court vacancy on top of it to, to, to borrow a line from Spinal Tap. Now it goes to 11. I, I mean, they're just they're out of their minds. <laughs> so and, and I, I expect I mean, it to get bad. Is, is there any chance after Kavanaugh, I think there was some blowback and if there hadn't been a delay between Kavanaugh and the midterm elections, I think it would have cost Democrats in the midterms in the age of Trump. Three weeks is basically a year. But now the election is getting pretty close. Is there any chance they'll just yep. hold back uh, and restrain themselves? So, look, anything is possible, but I don't think so. Um, I think their mm -hmm. base demands that they go scorched earth, that their base is so enraged. Uh, that you'll see Kamala Harris putting on a performance. You'll see each of the members of the Senate Judiciary. Remember in, in, in Kavanaugh, we had Cory Booker doing his I am Spartacus moment. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think we'll see something like that again. And uh, it's not clear where they're going to hit her. Uh, when Judge Barrett was nominated to become Judge Barrett to join the, the Federal Court of Appeals, uh, the Democrats went after her on her faith and 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 attacked her for for being Catholic. Um, Dick Durbin asked her if she was an Orthodox Catholic, which I'm not sure what he meant with the adjective Orthodox. He he wasn't referring to a member of the Orthodox Church, <laughs> Greek or Russian. It was just I think Orthodox was just an epithet. It was just an insult. Um, and and Diane Feinstein famously or rather infamously put it this way. She said, the dogma lives loudly in this one, which, which, you know, today's Democratic Party has a manifest contempt for people of faith, whether you're Catholic, whether you're evangelical, whether you're an Orthodox Jew. If faith is an important part of your life, uh, the position of a lot of Democrats seems to be you are not fit for public office and you're not fit to serve as a judge. And, and that is uh, that, that, that is a ridiculous position, but, but it's also an unconstitutional position because the text of the Constitution explicitly prohibits a religious text, a test for public office. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't mind if Cory Booker goes Spartacus again, as long as he keeps his shirt on. I think that would be important. <laughs> um, your book is called One Vote Away, How a Single Supreme Court Seat Can Change History. Give me an example. What, what are we talking about uh, when you say change history? Well, sure. So, so what the book does, um, before I was in the Senate, I was a Supreme Court litigator. That's what I did for a living is argue cases in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. And so each chapter in the book takes a different constitutional liberty. Uh, so there's a chapter on religious liberty. There's a chapter on free speech. There's a chapter on the Second Amendment. There's a chapter on U.S. sovereignty. There's a chapter on elections and democracy and Bush versus Gore. And we could see that same sort of chaos play out in this election right now. And, and what the book does is every chapter tells war stories, tells the inside story of what was happening in the big landmark cases. And, and many of those cases I litigated personally. So, so it takes the reader uh, behind the curtain. It takes the reader uh, into the court to understand who the justices are, 
what the disagreements are about. And it goes through many of these, these landmark cases were five to four. And, and a 5-4 case, we're just one vote away from losing our fundamental liberty. So you asked for an example. Let's take, for example, free speech. Uh, one of the cases, the chapter in free speech talks about at length, is, is the Citizens United case. Now, now many people have heard of Citizens United, but, but they don't really know what it's about other than that Democrats hate it. But Citizens United, the, the core issue in that was whether American citizens have a right to criticize politicians. And, and, and the fact pattern, what happened there, Citizens United is a nonprofit organization that made a movie, made a movie critical of Hillary Clinton. And the Obama administration went after them and wanted to find them for daring, for having the, the audacity to criticize Hillary Clinton. And, and the case went all the way to the Supreme Court. And, and, and there was a very revealing moment at the oral argument where, where Justice Sam Alito um, asked the lawyer from the Obama Department of Justice, said, Un under your view of the case, does the federal government have the power to ban books, to prohibit the sale of books if they criticize a politician? And the Obama DOJ said, yes, yes, we have the power to ban books. And I mean, it was stunning. It was radical. Now, thankfully, uh, that extreme view was rejected, but it was rejected 5-4. There were four justices willing to embrace the view that the federal government can ban movies or books if they criticize a politician. And both Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden have pledged to nominate justices who, were vo who will vote to overrule Citizens United. In other words, to give the federal government the power to censor you and me. And that's an example of being just one vote away determining whether we have that liberty or we don't. You know, it's amazing. I've talked to so many liberals who would listen to Hillary Clinton rant about Citizens United and talk about dark money. And when I would explain to them what the case was about, they would kind of blanch and say, oh, yeah, you actually don't yeah. want to be able to censor books. So it is it is interesting. I, I got to ask you this because out of personal curiosity, if nothing else, you were on a short list uh, as a Supreme Court possibility. Uh, the Babylon Bee had a hilarious uh, article about you dressing up as a woman <laughs> so you could get into the list. <laughs> but in fact, you, you don't seem to want it. Is that is that true? Yeah. Uh, that, that, that is true. Um, and, and I actually talk about it quite a bit in the, in the book, what, One Vote Away. I talk about for each of the three vacancies we've had, uh, President Trump and I have had serious conversations uh, about those vacancies, particularly the first vacancy, the Justice Scalia vacancy. Uh, in November of 2016, the president pressed me pretty hard on whether I would be willing to go to the court. And, and I, I was deeply honored by, by the possibility, but, but I just said flat out, no, I didn't want to do it. Um, and, and that was true with the latest list. Um, and, and I'll tell you the reason why, uh, which is that a principled judge stays out of political and policy fights. And, and if I were a judge, I would. I'd stay out of them. I don't want to stay out of them. I want to be right in the middle <laughs> of the big epic battles we're having, whether, whether it's free enterprise versus socialism, whether it's fighting for school choice, whether it's fighting to, to secure the border, whether, whether it's fighting to rebuild the military, whether it's fighting to move our embassy to Jerusalem. Uh, all of those are fights that belong in the political arena. And so a story I recount in the book is, is this summer when, when Trump was putting together his new list, he called me. I, I was actually visiting my in-laws out in California. We were out at a lake uh, with the girls. And so I was standing on the dock in my flip-flops and, and bathing suit, and the girls are out on the, out on the boat water skiing. And uh, the president calls in my cell and he says, Ted, I, I want to put together a new list for the Supreme Court. And he asked, he said, hey, can I add you to the list? I'd like to add you to the list. And, and I told him on the phone, I said, Mr. President, if, if it's helpful, if it's beneficial uh, to put me on the list, sure. I, I'm happy to be on it if it's helpful for me to be on it. Uh, but you should know I don't want the job and I wouldn't take it. And, and that's what I've told him for each of the three vacancies. And frankly, Andrew, you can see why right now the fight over Judge Barrett in the Senate, we're in the middle of an epic battle and I am leading the fight to confirm Judge Barrett. And, and, and I hope to be part of nominating and confirming two, three, four, five principled constitutionalists to the court. 
I just don't want me to be one of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm just about out of time, but I have to ask you, uh, as the debate is coming up, uh, this polls seem incredibly locked down. They seem incredibly steady with Biden in the lead. Do you see this as a genuine problem going forward or do you doubt the polls? How do you feel quickly? I have to ask you, uh, how do you I, feel about the election going on? I think the election is volatile. It could go either way. The left is going to show up in huge numbers. They hate the president. They'll crawl over broken glass. We got to make sure everyone else shows up. We got to make sure the people who love free enterprise and the Constitution and Bill of Rights show up. And, and let me encourage your listeners, the book, One Vote Away, it came out today, so it just launched today. It's already number five on, on Amazon bestsellers list as of noon today. Um, go to Amazon, go to Barnes & Noble, anywhere you get your book, order the book. And, and it's designed, you don't have to be a lawyer, it's designed to be interesting and fun and give you the inside story. If you care about the election and the stakes in 2020, this lays it out powerfully. If you care about the Supreme Court, if you want to know what's really at stake in the battle over, over Judge Barrett becoming Justice Barrett, this book is designed to explain all of that in, in a readable, fun way that, that, that also hopefully will, will help, help you learn more about what, what the fight is all about. Great. Thank you very much, Senator Ted Cruz. The book is One Vote Away, How a Single Supreme Court Seat Can Change History. It's always good to see you, Senator. Thanks a lot. Take care. God bless. God bless. 